here's how marriage protects children. It is not that there's a bunch of benefits that the government gives you that trickle down and protect the children. Marriage protects children because every time a man and a woman who are attracted to the opposite sex marry, that act itself is protecting children because it means neither of them will be creating fatherless if they are true to their vows. Neither of them will be creating fatherless children across multiple households. And how does gay marriage undermine that? How do two men getting married or two women getting married cause fatherlessness? How does it undermine efforts to prevent fatherlessness? Maybe you think that allowing lesbian couples to get married will increase the demand for sperm donors, but if that's the case, your beef is really with sperm donation, not with same-sex marriage. The reason why, and here I have to say, this is a... Um, we're all entitled to our opinions of what marriage should be in the future. But the history of marriage in this country, the legal history of marriage, is littered with attestations that managing procreation so that children are not born out of wedlock in fatherless homes that hurt them and become a burden on the community, or at least are less likely to. And so the children are raised in homes that are more likely to be successful with the mother and father raising them together. This has been articulated as the purpose of marriage and law over and over. We didn't make it up because we don't like gay people. Even if that has been the purpose of the government's involvement in marriage, why must that be the only purpose? Why would adding a purpose undermine the already existing purpose? What happens if we change the norms and change the idea that there's something special about husbands and wives, that we have a stake in this relationship that we don't have as a, a communal stake, that we don't have in other kinds of relationships? Well, the first thing that's going to happen is that the law is going to repudiate what I think it should be strengthening. So, I mean, I really, this emerged for me as a practical problem. I was like, I'm going around the country making some progress because I'm saying marriage really matters because children need a mom and a dad. Now, when I go to, what happens if Massachusetts adopts gay marriage? What happens when I go there and I try to make the case that marriage really matters because children need a mom and a dad? Fucking nothing. The idea that marriage is important for more than just that reason in no way repudiates that reason. Gallagher seems to think that saying marriage is important for X and Y is contrary to saying marriage is important for X. That doesn't fucking follow. People are going to look up and they're going to say, well, that's not the purpose of marriage because same-sex couples are married. So obviously marriage has nothing to do with getting mothers and fathers for children. The only people I have ever heard make this complete non sequitur of an argument are people who oppose same-sex marriage. You'd have to be a complete shithead to think that because not all marriages are procreative, marriage has nothing to do with procreation. This is like if you said hammers are the best tools for pounding nails and someone responded, but I use my hammer for cracking nuts, therefore hammers have nothing to do with pounding nails. How do you not see how ridiculous this reasoning is. What are you talking about, Maggie, right? And you can bring up the example of infertile couples, but I will guarantee you, again, as a matter of recent historical fact, that when I spent 20 years going around the country saying this, there is no one in the audience who ever raised the problem of infertile couples and said, that repudiates the idea that marriage has something to do with bringing men and women to make and raise the next generation. That's because it doesn't follow for the exact same reason. I think that these, the, the classic understanding of marriage is not only going to be repudiated, it's going to be actively oppressed by law, culture, and society after same-sex marriage. Now, why do I think that? Because you're a paranoid bigot. Because I think the heart of the gay marriage idea goes something like this. There is no morally relevant difference between same-sex and opposite-sex couples when it comes to marriage and its purposes. And if you see a difference, there's something wrong with you. How does seeing the classic understanding of marriage as morally equal to same-sex marriages constitute the oppression of the idea of traditional marriages? You heard Maggie say when a child is born, a mother is likely to near be nearby. But men don't always stick around to care for their children. They sometimes leave. And we need this institution of marriage to keep the parents around, but particularly to pressure the fathers to stick around in order to care for their children, because children deserve to have both their father and their mother. Now, there are a couple things, I think, in reaction to this. One is it's sort of a very dismal view of men. Another is that it's kind of an impoverished view of marriage. But mainly it's, okay, so what does this have to do with gay people? 
How does allowing two men to marry each other exacerbate the problem of absentee fathers? And Maggie's answer to this is that essentially, as I understand it, and again, this might be a caricature, but I don't think so. If we accept that same-sex couples can be married, then marriage is no longer focused exclusively, or at least almost exclusively, on pressuring men to stick around for their offspring, but it's about something else. It's about adult sharing of life. It's about commitment, but without the biological connections. It's about love and happiness. It's about something, but not about that. And I think that Maggie is setting up a false dilemma. She seems to have an all-or-nothing view of marriage. Either marriage is only and exclusively about children, or it has nothing to do with them at all. Because actually, I agree with her that a very important function of marriage is to get people, particularly fathers, to stick around and care for their offspring. But how does it do this? It does this by saying that this person that you're committing to, you're committing to for keeps. This is serious, and we, your family and friends who stand around you, are going to hold you to it. Now, that's important for biological offspring. It's also important for offspring who are not biologically related to the parents, for other children who may be in the household. And frankly, it's also important for childless adults to have someone there for keeps. So basically what I want to say is, I think Maggie Gallagher has picked the wrong battle. That if the concern is really get fathers to stick around for their children, I'm right there with her. But there's still room for love and commitment and support for people who are not having children, including same-sex couples. 